uses this data from the FAO. I haven't seen it. Yeah, it shows your impact, uh, your individual impact. So you can just type in how many days you've been vegan. So in my case, it would be just over four years. And you can see how much water and land and, and resources you've saved and, and how many animal lives you've saved. My first response to that would be, I just completely don't trust that type of site. Um, do they show how they make those calculations? Yeah, yeah, it's based on the FAO data and it's cited on there. So I've heard some like, um, in the panel I linked the other day, like some scientists discussed, discussed this issue in particular. And what they said was that um, the research is still unclear and that um, it's extremely hard to calculate such a thing because uh, there's a lot of no, factors. No, no it's, it, I agree that it's, it's a little bit unclear, but the thing is, is that mm -hmm. the underestimates are actually going to favor the vegans and not the carnists by actually it could be up to a factor of 100 based on a new study that was done measuring the methane production of managing animal waste they they actually haven't been measuring this correctly okay so a, a reductio of this is um would you stop would you make sure to figure out where your vegetables are coming from say they're coming from africa would you make sure to not c consume any of those vegetables in your vegan i don't see how that's even i mean it takes a plane trip from africa what is it 10 hours 12 hours or something or is it even like 16 i don't know i mean i could say that i prefer local food just for no but i would argue that you should only you, that you should specifically avoid those foods because you're supporting an industry that's creating like all this complete waste and all. I mean, and slavery I mean, and slavery in Africa. Everything is everything is unsustainable on 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 a certain level. And I support I support human rights efforts, like, but and I do think that we could be growing like avocados rather than in Timor, rather than in Bolivia, we could be freeing up land here by reducing meat consumption, since that's actually tying up our land. In, in the whole world, the meat industry is currently tying up the land mass the size of Africa. I mean, I would love if we could grow these locally, right? For on a large scale, but your position is actually in direct conflict with my, with my goal which is to actually have these locally. I mean, it's a great sentiment, but it just sounds like virtue signaling to me, what you're saying. Because it doesn't sound like you actually understand. Well, I'm not the one virtue signaling. No, I'm saying I would love to get all my all my foods locally, not just myself, but for a, for a large population. But like I said, the land's tied up in animal agriculture. I mean, so what you're saying sounds great, but it just, it just, it doesn't sound like you understand enough about these issues to be making these claims. And I mean, I've looked into it and transporting vegetables. Wait, wait, what? Um, it, it, it has about, from what I look like, I don't have the source on hand, but it, mm -hmm. it was about 10% more greenhouse gas uh, to that issue. Um, but again, that's, that's just re in respect to vegetable farming. Like animal agriculture is vastly more releases vastly more uh, greenhouse gases and uses vast vast amounts more land so it's just proportional to the, the, the crop but it, it seems to okay let me just say this it seems like you're rep, you're presenting this issue as like a solved fact but as far as i know it's completely controversial and there's a lot of disagreements within the scientific community on this issue I don't know what that achieves by like. What are you trying to achieve by saying that? Well, I'm just saying that it seems a bit weird that you like the way you present this case is that it's completely solved when I don't think it is. I mean, maybe it is, but I, as far as I know from non-biased sources, it's completely. I mean, do you disagree with the FAO numbers if if we just started deciding in general text the land use that's currently allocated to animal agriculture? Like, would you just say that, oh, it's too contentious, I can't, I can't believe those numbers, 
just throw it out. Well, I'm, I'm down to look at it. Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I mean, you can that. you can link me I'm stuff gonna... after this after this debate's over, but I mean, we're not going to go through papers during this. Well, I have a chart. I just I'm not on my PC right now. It's really easy to read. You can just. Hey, yeah, I'm I'm gonna butt in for a second. That's not a move we allow in here. If one side wants to bring up papers, you uh, are expected to engage with them. No problem. Now that that's not to say you can spam papers. Oh, this paper supports me. Throw it at someone. But if someone wants to give a particular paper and cite something within that paper that supports their point, then yeah, it is. You you can't just say I don't want to look at it. You you're expected to. Okay, that's fine. I, I just thought it might be boring, but that's okay. We are fine with boredom. Well, I mean, so you're you're claiming that individual impact isn't what what is it like? What's the actual claim? Individual impact isn't going to take down the industry. I mean, yeah, we we know that. Like, what are you saying? Wait, what? Like, you're saying individual impact doesn't have that big of an an impact, but I want to know just. How no, 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 no. I, I said, I said, I don't know what my individual impact would be and if it measures up against the suffering that would happen to me. I'm still, like, I, I still need to seek clarity there. Like, what do you mean? Like, can you, can you just try to flush that out? Sorry. Like, which, I'm, I'm, which, I'm, uh, which, uh, yeah, just just while I dig up this source. Um, Sorry, could you just this... clarify your question? I, I don't understand the question. No, I just I just I don't understand what your threshold would be. Oh, threshold for um, yeah, for, yeah. for suffering versus like how worthwhile the the vegan endeavor would be. Right. So, yeah, like, I don't know how many cows would have to suffer to equate to my suffering. I have no idea about that. But I assume it's greater than three, greater than four. I don't know about five. Right. Sorry, I was just uh, logging onto my PC. I, I missed the last thing you just said. Yeah, I don't know how many cows suffering would equate to my suffering. I mean, do you, do you deny that you would be saving animals by going vegan? Well, I don't even know if I were to be, if I, if I'm saving even greater than one animal or if I, if I'm even saving any, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, think, I, think, I think that's highly a, an extraordinarily contentious position to, yeah. to say that by eating broccoli, instead of an animal that you don't know if you're saving a being that just that just sounds extremely strange well there's two things the first one is let's the amount of waste in grocery stores like if i'm eating a part of that what would be wasted individually then they still make the same order for the same amount of meat that they would have otherwise and then second and you can respond to that first if you want or i can give the second thing wait so you're talking about supply and demand now? Yeah, like, dude, I'm not an economist. I don't know how their orders work in the grocery store. And, like, also, if it's if it's only one, then for sure my suffering would weigh up against only one cow that would only live for a few years. So it has to be two or greater. And then the, the other side is the, um, like, the rodents and other animals that would be killed in the... Other case, now, I don't know, you guys seem to think that they, they kill less in the vegan case, um, like rodents and stuff, than the cows, but I don't know about that for sure. I don't know. Well, um, like, what are, you, what are you comparing here? Like, are you taking, what, what kind of animal products are you actually comparing? Well, like, I, do you go I to restaurants? Pretty much. 
Like I eat some chicken here and there, but almost all beef. Well, I mean, if we take like chicken, for example, I mean, how many meals is, is of meat is is on a chicken? How many calories are on a chicken? I mean, it's probably like two or three meals, and that's one life. Yeah, like, I agree. Are, 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 the, um, if we want to talk about chicken, like sentience, like I'm not really sure. Man, I've like spectated some chickens doing some things, and I don't even know if they. <laughs> I don't know if they have like, like sadness or anything. I don't know what they're thinking. I can't, I can't relate to chickens. Okay, let me just before I go down that would would it actually convince you if I could show you a a paper on on chicken intelligence and possibly metacognition? Yeah, that would be interesting for sure. I'd love to see that. And the point that I was making was just about per calorie life's taken per calorie because you were you were saying that you're not sure if more rodents are killed in 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 uh crop crop harvesters or whatever so to go to like the levels of sentience i like that just to me just sounds like a random diversion from the empirical point there but I mean, if it will convince you, I'll, I'll I'll go down that. Well, I mean, yeah. If you had if you had evidence for it, obviously it would help to convince me. I mean, I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. Sure, my paper is just in general chat. Like, listen, when I watch chickens, like <laughs> they're very funny. Okay, here's a here's a review of cognition in chickens. And I'd like you to scroll down to there's a section on self control, uh reasoning and logical inference, and temporal abil- abilities. So they actually have the capacity for mental time travel and to plan ahead, which shows not only just basic cognition. But if they're making on the on the fly decisions, so self control is where they demonstrated this. I'm reading the self control section. Which paragraph? Well, I mean, if let me see. So the the importance of self control. Uh, is outlined in the first paragraph and they give some examples of this and then in the fourth paragraph it demonstrates that domestic chickens actually have that so they could have had an immediate gratification of access to food but if they waited for a three six and then followed a 22 second delay which was the jackpot Hens actually held out, and these are domestic hens, the ones that you're eating, actually didn't just act on their low-level instinct, but they demonstrated a rational discrimination um, for and planned for future outcomes. So they actually employed self-control to optimize those outcomes by waiting for the jack. Okay, I mean, this this demonstrates some level of cognition greater than what I had previous thought of chickens before. But um, it doesn't show the capacity for suffering at all and, like, um, understanding of others. Like, do they have awareness of others or themselves? Yeah. And, like, okay, so if you scroll to the next section, reasoning and logical inference. So what... What this actually is, what seems like a simple behavior, which is just the pecking order, actually is inc- is is far more complex based on this experiment. They so it would be an over reduction just to say that the pecking order is just some very very low level behavior. So they can make inferences. Um, actually. This paper argues that they're making inferences on the level of a seven-year-old child. So they observed 
they observed another chicken uh, who defeated one of their companions, and they made an inference there that if they couldn't defeat that companion, that they weren't going to be able to defeat this dominant chicken. So what that shows is they're they're actually making making a logical inference about that and showing submission to the dominant hen, which they saw defeated their their other companion. Cool. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, so th- what that is is um, transitive inference. And we know that humans develop that at around age seven. So, I mean, I, I don't know how you're going to going to be able to make this case that mm-hmm. chickens mm-hmm. are just really i don't know what, what were you saying chickens are dumb or something like that? no i said they were funny um <laughs> i mean they do some weird things that don't make much sense um and they don't seem to like have empathy and stuff like this but I don't know. I, I like I'm not a chicken expert, right? So this is interesting evidence. I'll consider it. Um, yeah, I'm. Yeah, this is adding to my view on it. So yeah. I'm just scrolling down to the part on empathy, cause like I mean, like you snuck that in, and this paper actually has has citations that cut against that. I can show you that too, if you if you like. I mean, th- this completely just bodied your your claim on chickens but wait did i have what, a claim on chickens i thought i just said i didn't know what chickens were capable of right well look i mean you kind of went to like sentience levels to justify eating chickens and i don't know if that like what that has to do with with your argument about veganism not offsetting enough suffering or whatever yeah, it would actually greatly uh, change my view on eating chickens, and I would probably just eat beef. I mean, like, let me let me ask you this: like, do you think that? I mean, this would apply to other animals as well. I mean, I can. I'm just going to make the same argument for cows. You understand? Yeah, but I kill much, much less cows. All right. So, are you going to concede? on every animal that's not a cow because i mean we can talk about about cows i can consider this further this is really really interesting thanks for linking um we can talk about cows cool cool i mean i'm 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 happy that if i could push you off of other types of meat i mean that to me is i'm not i'm not necessarily trying to get you to go completely vegan i'm just trying to get you to think about these ideas a little bit more so yeah in not case only of- that, not, let me just quick not only that but the you know i don't like chickens that much i think they're um the source of protein is like so lean that it, it's there's not many calories in it so it's kind of easy to get your protein in as it were if you're trying to like you know uh cause muscle hypertrophy or something but anyway anyway so yeah so Okay, so let's just clarify what is the justification with with cows. It's that they have enough calories that their death is offset because some alternative would likely what cause equal or proportional amount of suffering. Well, let's say I have one cow and then, you know, there's three rodents dying because I'm you know, if I were to not eat that cow, sorry, and, and if I were to be vegan, that three extra rodents would die. I, I don't know how many, I don't know about that, those equations. Sure. So, I mean, where are you getting this cow? Is it just like you go to the restaurant or, or a supermarket? Well, let's not go to the grass fed meme for now. I just, let's just use um, Canadian farmed cows because I'm Canadian. Sure. I mean, if if you're in Canada, even if it was grass fed, they're going to be because it, it's cold out there. So they would need to be supplementing alfalfa grass anyway, half the year because grass doesn't grow for like half the year in cold areas. So well, I'm in Vancouver. You'd actually run in, run in, well, you'd actually run in. I don't think even in Vancouver. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm from Vancouver. Grass doesn't just grow here rampantly for half, yeah, half the year. 
I'd say a few months of the year. It, it doesn't right, matter. Right, right. So the, the point is, you're going to, like, if if it was purely grass-fed beef, and, and again, a lot of this beef is that is claimed to be grass-fed is actually grain-finished. So they fatten up the, the cow before slaughter. That has cropped us. But you have to supplement grass in the winter months, which is you have to get a combine to go over that and then you got to ship it and it, so you got it's not it's not going to be local grass it's going to be from somewhere else you got all the transportation issues you got all the all the crop death issues because alfalfa grass actually has extremely large amounts of crop deaths associated with it i mean a, a lot of animals take shelter in in this grass so that's yeah but that's i need needed. i need it to the level of numbers though like, like, like to some level of precision uh, with greater than or less than. Oh, uh, well, we just, I don't know how much precision well, that's, precision it's easy. I, mean, I don't think I don't we have, think have uh, that level of precision. Yeah. It's incredibly yeah, hard no, to, we, to no, we can. predict. No we, no, we can. No, we no we can. You can have you can have a level of precision to say that in the grain fed finish this is, this this can happen you can do this in the grain fed finish context you can make the case that it's at least at least going to cause as many crop deaths as getting the grain yourself and consuming it yourself and the way to make that case is to just look at the calories or amount of grain that is fed to cows in the grain finishing process if it's I more yeah and if and if you're just end up on the on the total feeding the, those cows more grain for the amount of, and then take the amount of people that cow can feed and then just take the amount of grain that that people can feed. And if that's more, then yes, it, it is, you are actually, you are, quantitatively are causing more death. Because it's the same thing. Oh, no, 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 but, but, but no, the, you, you can, we, first of all, you can live off those grains. I will, but, I will, but, 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 but you don't need to. You don't need to. If one is like vastly superior, vastly greater than the other, you could, even if you were to go to up to other ones you, and try to extrapolate, if it's to such a great difference in degree, even if you go to other other crops, um, you you wouldn't you wouldn't have a really much of a case to make. Well, to uh, make uh, that argument, you would have to um, you would have to show that you're not eating stuff that's like plain ridden over to your country. Because you, you have to support plane companies, and those companies have to build planes, right? And all that. Wait, wait. Hold on. Like if you're eating only local greens, greens, then I would agree with you. Hold on. Hold on. No, that doesn't work either, because if you, if you eat meat, then the grains, hey, how do you know that those grains are also local, and they also weren't flown in? That doesn't well, work. Max efficiency usually. You don't. In, you don't. Do you know? Do you know that the grains are not of that fed to meat are local or not? I think. Well, no. I can't, I can't if you want to say it's efficiency to make an inductive argument, you can make the efficiency to make an inductive argument for eating the grains. Well, yeah. You could, There's you no can, symmetry you breaker. There. Grains. Do you have a symmetry breaker? Wait, are you eating grains? Dude, that's not an answer to the question. So no, what no you said, you, you, okay, great. So there's no symmetry breaker. So that, so simply, so are you going to drop the point about local versus imported? Uh, not in theory. Okay. So then what's the symmetry breaker? Well, the th well, it's about practice. What you, what you, what you do? Practice. So what's the symmetry breaker in practice? That there would be planes involved in, in practice. Why is that a symmetry breaker? Why would there not be planes involved for the feeding the cow cases, for oh, transporting see, the grain to the cows? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, so you'd have to just show that they don't use planes. planes. To yeah, can you, can you show that? I think I could, but I can't agree okay. on Oh, OK. Do you want to go back to the drawing board and come back when you On that issue, yeah. OK, cool. Are you gonna drop that? Are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna drop that in the meantime? Uh, I mean, yeah, technically I will, but the logic is, is, is what's the logic? Well, not the formal logic, but just uh, the the I guess induction would be the what's the induction? What's the induction? What's the induction? I don't know. I'll just drop it. 
right. Oh, okay, cool. Great. All right, all right. Okay, great. Okay, so we so we're off that. And so now again, so the point being is getting back to the central point is that if you were to look at the calories of the grain for that a cow is finished on, and if that's an, that's more than the amount that can vastly, vastly more than the amount, considering people on plant-based diets, also considering plant, people on plant-based diets have calories that very much mostly come from different types of grains, whether it be maize, whether it be soy, whether it be um, all other forms of plant-based crops. Uh, it, 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 yeah, yeah. So, so again, so the, the data is there. Now, we can look this up. We can look this up and we can, and if it comes out that the calories in the finishing process are just vastly superior, then I don't know how anyone can make the case that there's not a quanti quantitative difference in the crop depths. Okay, let me just agree right now then with that. But uh, mm -hmm, the, the sure. problem is yeah. now it transitions into health. Where you need to show people wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, like hold on, wait, wait, wait. So just to be clear, so we've we've agreed that if that data could be presented, then you would concede on the crop depth point. Uh, yeah. Okay, and if we can show, and if we can show that the vegans that are do have outcomes that are healthier than the omnivores that have most of their calories from most of their calories from those grains and to the degree that they eat those the other crops it would we could show that it wouldn't make up that difference if there's a huge vast difference it wouldn't actually make up that difference then you wouldn't really have a case for the health outcomes to be to be bad even you wouldn't actually have it either way anyway Wait, you mean a difference, mean a difference in terms of how long those individual people would Reduce the reduction versus would it increase? Well, there's one metric you can use for health. You can use other metrics. You can use morbidity. You can you you can you can use hyper more incidence of hypertension or incidence of diabetes or incidence of all those other things. Um, so, but anyway, okay. So we're clear that you would you would drop the you would drop the crop depth. And yeah, what's yeah. the what's the other point? Um, humans on such a diet where they're eating like 80% grains, like how, how many- Wait, 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 wait. Who said 80% grains? Well, I'm just, you said 50. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Right. Why, why, why'd you go to 80? Why'd you go to 50? Because that's more representative of what vegans are actually consuming. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and yeah. I don't buy that the other 50% yeah. wouldn't be shipped over or whatever. Like Wait, I, I no, that again, yeah, no, we already, no, we already dropped the shipping because again, because again, shipping, shipping is not a symmetry breaker. Shipping can happen for, for feeding the cows and shipping can happen for feeding the humans. Right, 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 yeah, right. That doesn't work. Okay, right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, good. So now what is, so if there's, if there's a certain percent, there's going to be a certain percentage that are grain, sure. And if that percentage that are grain, um, even as less is okay. So if if it's that percentage, we can take down to fifty, um, and we could replace it with other things. Even if there are other crops, um, if the same if the same calories of grain, if we could reduce it for fiftieth of the cow side, and it's still just vastly superior, whatever we're replacing those other fifty percent of calories with humans would have to make up that vast difference if there is a vast difference. In order to make the case or to have any reason to believe that there would be more crop deaths on one side than the other. Yep. Yeah, okay, so the point being is that if we can show that the grains in the finishing process are just the amount of calories that are put in compared to what you get out are just so fast that the overwhelming majority of these grains, in fact, the overwhelming majority happens to be the, overwhelming majority of grains that we make, I believe, are for cattle. Um, if we can show that just so much has to go into the cow, that even if we were to not consume 80% of the grains, 50% uh, of our calories or whatever standard metric you have, the difference that we would have to make up for that, for crop deaths, would have to be so great for these other crops. And I, don't, I just don't understand what the health point would be there. Um, 
I just don't understand how it, a, a healthy diet, first of all, it's not even clear that an 80% grain diet wouldn't be healthy um, compared to an omnivore diet. I would actually, if I had to make the, <laughs> I have to, if I were to make the case, I really, it, I would be agnostic, but it's not clear that compared to someone just eating beef, eating this grass-fed beef or whatever, or grain-finished beef, that someone eating 80% grain would have a worse health outcome than that. In fact, if I had to speculate, if I had to make an intuition, I would say they would probably have a better health outcome anyway. Right, so I don't know. So what's, I, the, I don't know what what's the health point? Oh, I was, when I made the health point, I was slightly confused about the, oh, okay. um, oh, okay. um, the shipping of the rest of the remainder of the diet. So there's no health point? Uh, yep. I mean, so I there's no crop, so wait, so there's no, so there's no crop death point and there's no health point. Yeah, I would need more research, but my intuition is so strong. Okay, okay. do you have, all right, we, we, I don't, okay, that's, that's fine. I, I mean, well, do you, do you have anything to change? Wait, hold on, I just want to be clear, I just want to be clear. You countered my claim that there, is, that, sorry, I didn't even make a claim. You just, actually, nothing really happened here. I didn't, I didn't all, all I see, you, you said, the, you said, you said the data, you said the data wasn't there, okay? Now I'm just being clear, I'm just setting the goalpost now. Right? All I'm doing right now is setting the goalpost. It's very important to do this because and it's important to do this before you look up data because a lot of times people waste their time looking up data and then people like to shift the goalpost. Now I'm just setting the goalpost to be clear, just to make sure that after this conversation, if the data does get presented to you, you don't this is on record and you won't start shifting the goalpost. So the goalpost, to be really clear, is that if we can show that the amount of calories of grain that goes into a cow, the amount of people that can be fed by a cow, is vastly superior, vastly outnumbers the grains we consume, even on a high grain diet. Even if we're eating a lot of, even, even, or even on a marginally grain diet. But we can take a high grain diet. Then it would follow that the crop death argument doesn't, for, that, for those two contexts, doesn't pan out for you. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If all the shipping stuff and all, and all this stuff. stuff wait, 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 shipping, shipping. We have no reason to believe one way or another for either case. We, uh, I don't know why we're going back to this again. Well, well there is there a reason. reason. But, but what's so what's the reason? Know. Wait, what's the reason why if you would believe that we have the shipping for one and not the other? Yeah. So humans want products that are uh, various. Whereas animals, we're trying to feed them a product that makes the most sense for us to feed them efficiency-wise. So that is a reason. Why, why, why is that a reason? Why? Well, that's just a... Come on, man. Like, <laughs> that's clearly a reason why... No, 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 not necessarily. It could just be... <laughs> it could yeah, be no, that the shipping... Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't see a reason why it... it, it I, I would lean that way, even. It could be that there's some some really cheaper way of getting it to the, to the cows and, and there are some things that cows need for the shipping. I had no idea. I don't, okay. I, I would, yeah, you would need data, you would need data on, on shipping for humans and shipping for cattle, so whatever cattle supplies or human supplies. It's not just food even, it's like just all the things that go into the life cycle analysis and the production part. Right, but it would be most optimal, obviously, if everything everything was right next to the cows. So that's a reason. That's a reason you would, okay, would well, no, no, no. Things would be most optimal and cheaper if things were next to the humans, too. But again, the, it's not always, if things don't always pan possible. out that way for humans. Things don't pan out that way for cows. Okay, maybe it's not possible for humans, too. Okay, we, we, we get, it's not, possible, maybe it's not possible for cows. It's not possible for humans and maybe not possible for cows. Like, you don't know this. I'm sure there's plenty of imports for cows in, in the life cycle analysis for the things that they are raised with. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, so there's no symmetry breaker. It hasn't been demonstrated. Great. Right. So, cool. so how many cows am I killing from eating just beef in my life? You can live off one if you were to only eat cows. Yeah. Yeah. So you would, if you were to only eat cows, you could probably, depending on the breed, depending on the cow, you could probably spend a year per cow. Um, you could probably live a year per cow. Um, you would probably end up killing less cows because your lifespan would probably be lower. 
and you would probably end up dying uh, dying earlier, so then you would live less years, so then you would kill less cows in, in your lifespan. Um, but I don't know how, I, I'm not sure exactly how much lower your lifespan would be if you were to eat an only cow diet. Okay, this okay, case is over, so I'm going to do some research on the thing, and, uh, mm -hmm. and we'll get back. Okay, cool. All right, guys, All right, guys thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeeted once again.